sports, churches, and outdoor streamers will now have the perfect tool to live stream from anywhere with this PTZ camera. This small marvel can pretty much connect, track, and be recorded or streamed from anything, anywhere, at any time. Before this little guy, you would have needed multiple camera people, lots of complex cables and switchboards with a team of people to pull off anything even similar. I know I would have killed for a camera like this when I was live streaming on my phone out in the wild. It was all you could do just to read the chat and keep in frame on the camera. But this thing changes everything. I can't wait to show you what this thing can do so you know what? Let's get to it! Now this little gem that I'm holding in my hand is one piece that could give any broadcaster the ability to put on a professional live sporting event while eliminating nearly all of the reoccurring expenses of camera crews and production. What enables these incredible abilities is this little versatile beast of a camera. The Obsbot Tail Air uses AI to track people, animals, or objects pretty much anywhere within a 360 degree range of motion with almost no input from an operator. You basically just set it and forget it. And when you couple that feature with the fact that you can connect this thing to your broadcast in so many different ways, it makes for the perfect broadcast solution. Of course, there is the old tried and true USB connection. A micro HDMI port is right here. And with this attachment, you can use Ethernet too. And if you can't run cables, that's okay. It will connect through Wi-Fi with NDI support as well. There's a micro SD slot here so you can record video right here on the unit. And it has a built-in microphone but it also has a 3.5 millimeter input for external microphones as well. The internal battery will give you more than two hours of film time and there is a group of pins on the bottom that can connect it to a battery extender as well. I know you're probably saying right now, what's the catch? The camera must suck or something. Well, the camera will do 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. And even though current streaming services don't really support it yet, it will do 4K at 30 frames per second, making it future-proof as well. And the camera quality, it's really good, even in low light. And that's because it has a 1.8 f-stop aperture and a 23 millimeter equivalent lens built right in. And if you do outdoor broadcasts, you can even get ND filters for the lenses to help manage light and give you the best picture quality possible. It also does a four times digital zoom to get those really nice close-up shots. You can use this as a webcam, of course, but it is much more like a DSLR image-wise than any webcam on the market. The camera will also stream directly to any platforms when you use it with the mobile app. That's Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook, just to name a couple. So let me show you what the mobile app can do. All right, so we could just go into the app store and we can do a search for the Obsbot software. Or in the instructions, there is a QR code that you can scan to take you right to it. And what we're looking for is the Obsbot start. So we're gonna go ahead and get that. And then we just open it. And then you just create an account here. You go to register and you just put in your email address. Then you gotta check these two boxes. You click next and then verify your email. You put a password in there and then you have to connect it with Bluetooth. So you hold down the power button on the camera to turn it on and then it will find it. There you go. Then you select how you wanna stream, Wi-Fi or cellular data. And then you can connect your Wi-Fi to your Obspot. And once you get in here, it's gonna run you through a very quick tutorial of how everything works. So what are we looking at here? Up in the top right, right up here, you see the screen that would be broadcast. And as you can see, it automatically found my face. If we go in here, we can set it to uh, auto focus on your face. So we'll do that. And if it sees movement, it kind of just goes to the movement. But the easiest way to lock it on is just to double click and you see a box that appears around me. And now it will track me. No matter where I go in the room, it's just gonna follow me and do whatever. Now, if I go and I select this box over here, the second one down on the left, I can have it focus on me in a lot of different ways. So auto means it will zoom in and out as necessary 
to get the what it wants from the picture. We can have it do a close up right there. And if we go over here, you can see there's a couple of different boxes here that kind of show what's going on. And obviously up there in the top, it's going to show the tight scene, whereas it shows everything else in the other box. So it's pretty cool stuff. It works really well. Let me show you some of the other features of the app here. You got your presets, so you can preset the type of camera that it would want to look at right here. And if we hold, we can delete those presets. And this is to set the initial position if you want to do that. You got your crop right here where we can crop the image, place it however we want, and it will just move the camera there. And then we can zoom in or out right there and you can see in the top right it's always showing the image that you're going to get on the scene this right here uh, you could box select objects for tracking so everything here is pretty simple these are different pieces uh, so your wide your auto your close-up you can set it right there and then this is how fast it's going to track you and for this you could put your boxes on the screen so you can move your composition and adjust and all that kind of stuff if you want. So you can see right here, moving it left, moving it right. On the left hand side here, this second one down gives you your different shots that you can select. This here is going to give you all kinds of different camera things that you could do. It's in auto right now, but if we change it over, we can adjust the ISO and the shutter speed. This right here is going to show you any recordings that you made on it. And then down here, you have a whole bunch of different options. So UVC mode is what you're going to want to select if you're going to just use it as like a webcam on your PC. You have to keep in mind that that deactivates some of the other features. In your media settings, you can set how you want your stuff to be recorded or streamed. So what do you want your HDMI output to be? Now the thing is, is if you have one set to... 4k in this case i have record set to 4k it can't do 4k on any of the other ones so if i were to set my hdmi out to 4k you can see that it takes my record and sets it to at 1080p and if i take my record to 1080p to 4k then it sets everything else as 1080 so just keep that in mind one definitely affects the others you've got your tail air settings right here your SD card settings whether you wanted to segment your videos into blocks of some setting you know so 32 gig 4 gig whatever however you want to segment out your videos if you're going to record on this and then you've got your factory settings and all that kind of stuff it's very simple up at the top you have your gesture control so you could select a target just by holding up your hand and it will automatically target you you can record using this symbol right there, or you can zoom using this. So I can force the camera to do that, as you see in the top right hand corner. Very, very cool. We're going to go ahead and set it all the way out again. And then dynamic zoom. So move your hands to zoom in and out using that. You can flip the direction, all that kind of stuff. So basically, that is everything you need to know about the app. If we go here, we can also just control it using that right there. So I can move the camera around, up and down, whatever I want. I can adjust how fast I, it zooms around using that right there. And I can obviously refocus and track on me by just unselecting that and then double clicking on me. And the camera automatically comes back to me again. App is really simple. It's really intuitive. So if you don't understand anything I'm talking about, trust me, when you get it, you're going to be able to figure it out in two seconds and easily set up your broadcast. And you could broadcast on this directly from anywhere. Now, if we wanted to live stream to a platform or something like that, you see where it says hold over our recording, we could just hold over that and it brings up another screen. Right now, you can see that we're set to record right to the SD card, but we can record to RTMP, which is streaming. YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or whatever this one is, Kawaii. You can easily do that, plus you can fully record by clicking this up here, and you can just click start. 
So what you want to do is if you're going to go to YouTube, you just go ahead and select YouTube. You sign into Google and then you can select your bit rate and your resolution up here in the top left hand corner. And all you have to do once you're signed in is click start and you're going to start live streaming directly to YouTube. It's going to see everything that's on your screen right up there. Pretty cool stuff. It will use the internal microphone, but of course you could just add a microphone in there. And when you do that, it's going to go ahead and give you all of the controls for that right here. The app is super intuitive as well. So if I go up here to home, we can disconnect from the camera and we can actually turn the camera off by just clicking on the little red icon up here in the top right. And it will just turn our camera off. I'm going to go ahead and download the actual Windows version of this as well. And we'll take a look and see what that has to offer. So I just click the download and it starts to download up there. And we're going to just go ahead and double click it and click yes. And next and next and install. And we're going to go ahead and allow access. So we can connect with it um, for Wi-Fi, which I do have on this computer or hotspot. And there we go. So we can do a video preview. But you have to do UVC mode on the device in order for it to be able to do that. So we can record, we can set up our tracking speed, upper body and close up so we can actually select that stuff. We can select the AI mode, whether we want animal tracking or in a group. We can add presets and we can actually use the gimbal to move this whole thing around. Now in order to use this video preview, you can see we've got to go and preview uh, enable UVC mode. So we can do that in the mobile app. And when you enable UVC, you have to just remember that NDI recording and live streaming and HDMI and all that stuff is not going to be available. So you have to turn this off again if you want to use the HDMI recording or anything like that. There we go. So now that that's on, we can enable the preview mode and we can set the camera however we want. And there we go. And now we'll be able to go and move it around. <laughs> I'm sitting way too close. We could set our zoom. We can go ahead and set our tracking. And there we go. Now it is tracking us just like it says it will. We can do close-ups or upper body or what, however we want to do this. So you can control it all in this app as well. You could set your tracking speed. You can fix it to track animals or whatever you want to do. Really cool stuff. And that is the app that you can get on the computer. Now you could stream and record completely with the mobile app, but most people will use something like OBS so let me show you the different ways that you can connect it to your machine and how to set it up in OBS. So how do we actually use this? Well, we're going to want to go into our phone first while we're connected to the camera and we're going to want to do UVC mode. And this is only if you're going to use the USB-C output and try to use it like a webcam. So we've got UVC mode activated and then all we need to do in OBS is click the plus and we're going to go to video capture device and select OK and then we can drop this down and all we have to do is select this Osbot tail air camera and there we go now we are connected we can go down here and we can use a custom audio device and we can select whatever microphone we want now you can see here that it doesn't give us the option to connect to the Osbot microphone which is fine because it's not really what we want to do anyways I would just select my normal microphone and we're all set to go and all the same features still work so I can either get it to focus on me by going like this and it automatically focuses on me so now when I move it's going to adjust I can use this right here to zoom in if I want to or zoom out or I can just go right into the app and select that like that you know, it's the same way that I showed you before in the app where that is the auto zoom or the close up or whatever you want. Or we can even go into the app and go ahead and crop out a section, zoom it in. And so there we go. So we can do pretty much anything we want to do. 
And by the way, it will still track me. It will focus on me. It will do everything it's normally set to do. You only really have to say boom and get it to track you one time and then it's done. So that's how you'd connect it through USB. Now, if you want to connect it through the micro HDMI, that's really easy as well. You just plug in your micro HDMI cable and you plug in the other end to something like this cam link or something like the cam link pro card that I have right here. This has four HDMI inputs on the back of it. So I can just plug directly into that. And then let me show you how it connects. Once we have our HDMI plugged in, we just click the plus and we connect it like any other camera. So we go ahead and click OK. We can drop this down and we can select, in this case, it's my cam link and bada bing, there we go, we are connected. And in this case, if we go down here and we use a custom audio device, we can actually select the audio device from the cam link. So there we go. So now we actually have the audio coming in from the OBSBOT. And it is the same thing. You can use the app to set it up. And this OBSBOT is totally set it and forget it. So I just select the cropping that I want right in the app. I select how I want it to follow me. And then it just does everything. I don't have to do anything. And it's very easy if I want to just change the shot to go ahead and select it and change the shot. So we can go with a wider shot or we can go with the close up or the half shot. That's the half shot. That's the close up. Or I can even just go ahead and crop it in like we did before. As you can see, this doesn't look terribly different from my regular camera other than the fact that my background is totally in focus, whereas my main camera is not. And by the way, little secret, if you go ahead and play around with the camera settings, you could get that blurred background look if that's what you're really going for. But that's just the two easiest and most common ways that OBSBOT's going to be connected to OBS. There are a bunch of other ones like Wi-Fi and of course the NDI method, which are a little more complicated. And if I was going to show you them all, well, this video would be like 100 years long. Let me show you what this thing is like out and about. And in this particular case, a really low light situation. So you can see what it looks like and what it sounds like to use the actual built in microphone. So you can see this is a pretty low light, bad light situation. I have a small light over here and I have that and it automatically, you see the box, it picked me up pretty much right away as something to track. Um, you can go in here and turn off the face autofocus and the auto tracking stuff if you want. But if it doesn't track the right object, all you have to do is double click it on your screen here. And now it's going to pretty much track me wherever I go. And it moves pretty quick. Most people aren't going to move really fast. If you're doing a sporting event, chances are you're going to be out pretty far anyways, which makes its tracking more accurate and a lot easier. I can move around wherever I want. And when I'm this close, it still tracks me without much problem. I can click here and go ahead and select auto which will zoom in and zoom out when necessary to give a decent kind of shot, whatever sort of shot you might be looking for. Um, I can do close up, you click that right there. It'll automatically close up. When you're looking at the main full app up in the top right hand corner, you got your little thing that's gonna show you what sort of screen you actually have. And in the main screen, you've got the red box, which shows you where it's kind of clipping out whatever the image happens to be. I'm really surprised at how good quality this is right now in ridiculously low light. It's pretty dark in here. Now I'm gonna turn off this light over here and you can see it's not gonna get any worse. There we go. It automatically adjusts pretty quick. So if you're worried about the actual quality of this camera, I don't think you have much to worry about. We are also using the microphone that's built into the camera for this right here. So it gives you some idea of what sort of audio you're gonna get. I would definitely recommend an external mic, but if you're doing some kind of sporting event, it doesn't even really matter if you have a microphone on it because you're going to have some sort of commentary or something going on over top of it anyways. And if you are going to use 
this for some sort of outdoor broadcast where you're just going around and you're going to kind of use it vlog style, the microphone on there should be adequate. But like I said, an external microphone is almost always going to be better. So what does this thing cost? My audience knows I'm cheap as hell. Truth be told, that's why I rarely do hardware videos unless it's a piece of equipment that I really need to have or a sponsored video. And this one's sponsored by Obspot. You guys also know I'm not rainbows and unicorns. I tell it like it is, no product is perfect. So the price of the Obspot Tail Air is $4.99 which I really thought was a bit high before I actually got the chance to use it. Now, this unit is very sturdy and well-tested and really easy to use. And it has an unreal number of ways that you can actually connect it and it produces very high quality 4K video, even in low light. It's gonna track any subject pretty much without fail with almost no input and has a very well-designed app and a battery that's gonna last for hours. A lot of testing and R&D went into this unit. So admittedly, 500 bucks isn't cheap, but you do get what you pay for, and I can see real value in the Obspot Tail Air for the right streamer or creator. A camera operator and producer is gonna cost you a lot more than 500 bucks, and one of these can virtually eliminate the need for any of that. With virtually no crew, you could do a sporting event using four of these with four different camera angles using nothing but a phone app. Putting something like that together without one of these or multiple ones of these would easily cost upwards of $10,000. There is definitely value in these for the right streamer or creator. You can check one of these out for yourself by clicking the link in the description down below. What do you guys think about the Obsbot Tail Air? Let me know and let them know in the comments because they're definitely going to be watching. And if you want to learn more about setting up OBS for your live stream, you should definitely check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.